Hello and welcome to the Isabellenhütte online video tutorial about how to configure our IVTS current and voltage sensing module with Busmaster. This video tutorial contains six chapters. Getting started, parts and wiring, setting up Busmaster, configuring result messages, configuring CAN IDs, configuring the CAN baud rate and configuring overcurrent thresholds. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how to configure Busmaster with the peak CAN to USB transceiver and our IVTS current sensing module. For this, we're going to need the program Busmaster that can be downloaded for free in the internet. Um, we're going to use version 3.2.2, but any other more recent version of Busmaster or even a successor version should do the job as well. Furthermore, we will need the IVTS CAN DBC file that can be obtained from Isabellenhütte or one of our partners. Also, we will need to download the peak CAN to USB drivers that can be obtained in the internet, for instance, on the peak website or the websites where you can actually purchase the CAN uh, peak CAN to USB transceiver should offer these drivers for download as well. These drivers need to be installed before we can proceed with this setup. After installing Busmaster version 3.2.2 on your machine and you start the application, you should see a window that looks pretty similar to what you can see on my screen right here. Now, this video is not supposed to be a complete demonstration of the Busmaster program. There's a lot of information in the internet about how to use Busmaster, a lot of tutorials, and if you're interested to learn more, I would suggest that you research this on YouTube or any other internet source. The first thing we need to do to get Busmaster to work with our peak can to USB transceiver is to select the appropriate driver. Now, as you can see, there are several tabs up here in the Busmaster program, and we're going to use mainly the CAN tab, which is the first one up here, just because our IVTS has a CAN 2.0 interface. And um, so this is the appropriate tab with all the functionality that we're going to need. Furthermore, we're going to use the Tools tab back here later on for the upload of our CAN DBC file. But for now, let's start with connecting the appropriate driver for our peak CAN to USB transceiver. For this, we're gonna click on this button right here for the driver selection. And in doing so, you will get a drop-down list of different drivers. And as we are using the peak CAN to USB transceiver, we're going to select peak USB from this drop-down list. By hitting this button, another window opens. And as you can see, our hardware, the peak CAN to USB driver that we have installed before um, is already listed under hardware right here. So it's the only hardware that is in the list. It's already pre-selected. So we're going to hit this button to add it to the configured CAN hardware list. And um, in this window, you can actually do some further settings. Um, important here is the baud rate, which is pre-configured to 500 kilobits per second. This is actually right the baud rate that we're going to need because this is also the standard configuration of IVTS. So no need to do any changes here. Just bear in mind if you later on reconfigure the baud rate of IVTS to let's say 250 kbits per second, you will need to reconfigure your hardware in this window and actually change this number in here to 250,000 bits per second. For now, there's not a lot more we have to do here. We will hit the OK button and our hardware is configured. Now that we have selected our hardware, the only thing that we will have to do now is to actually hit this connect button. And I will do that right now. 
and as you can see, um, the button changes its appearance from connect to disconnect. So that means that the um, hardware is now connected to our software. And you can actually double check by looking at the peak Cantor USB transceiver. The red LED on the module should start blinking. So that means that the transceiver has been successfully connected to Busmaster. The next thing you want to do is to convert the CanDBC file that is provided by Isabelle or one of our partners to a CanDBF file. This is the file format that is used by Busmaster and um, we're going to switch the tab from the Can tab where we currently still are to the Tools tab. And it is very convenient that Busmaster actually includes a format converter that will help us to perform this conversion. So we're going to click on this button. And um, this opens up a window and as you can see there's a couple of converters here. Um, we're not going to use these. Uh, we're going to click on other converters, the third tab in this window. And from this drop down, select the conversion type. We will select a DBC to DBF conversion. Now, what you're going to do is you kind of click on this button here with the three dots to select the input file. And as I performed this operation before, my folder where I have this saved is pre selected. So I'm going to select the CAN DBC file that you will get from Isabellenhütte. You click open and the path is going to populate here in this window and it's actually going to pre-select the output file. It's going to use the same path here um, to save the output file and uh, it's also going to use the same um, name of the file except for a different ending here, the DBF ending. Now you would click convert now. I'm not going to do this because I already did convert the file. So I already have it saved on my machine. Um, so I'm going to click the close button. But if you click convert here, this um, conversion is going to take place automatically and you will get the actual can DBF file, which can be used in Busmaster. And the next step is going to be to actually upload the CANDBF file that we just created into the program. We're going to use the CANDBF editor right here. I'm going to click on this and there's two options. There's new, creating a new CAN database. We're not, we don't want to do that. We already have the database, so we're going to click open. And we're going to select the newly created CAN DBF file right here. Click open again. And this is going to open up this window here, which um, basically has all the CAN messages, the IVT CAN messages populated here on the left. So um, the IVT message command um, is the first one, CMD is the abbreviation for a command, and the result messages for I, which is current, result messages for U1, U2, U3, which is uh, are the three voltage inputs, result messages temperature, response message, which are basically the response messages to the command messages up here, result messages power, current counter, and energy counter. Now, you can look into the windows here at the right and then you will see, for instance, for the command messages, all the different single messages that are contained under this header command message. So you see there's the trigger messages and so on and so forth. So you can basically get an overview of their name, byte index, bit number, length, and so on. This is going to be helpful later on when we're 
going to um, do simple configurations with IVTS, it is very helpful to have this can DBF file uploaded into Busmaster because it's going to be easier for us to select the appropriate message that we want to send to the module. The last thing you need to do is to hit the can DBF editor button once more and select save and import from the drop down to import the DBF file to Busmaster and to save it. After that, you can close um, this pop-up window right here. Please check out these additional videos linked below for instructions in performing various configurations with our IVTS modules.